In an epic new series of historical vignettes and political commentary, Nautilus and forward award-winning author Richard C. Lyons expertly retells the histories of democracy and deconstructs humanity's living democratic masterpieces in his new book, The DNA of Democracy. It is out now. And, of course, you can get on Amazon on all those great places, but you could go right to his website, which I'm going to pronounce as lylee.com, which is L-Y-L-E-A.com. And we're super excited to have Richard here on Big Blend Radio with us today to tell us all about the DNA of democracy. It's a good time to do it, too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Welcome, Richard. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Lisa and Nancy? We're doing That's great. Good. We're doing great. So your website is this is interesting. It's a it's a combo between Richard C. Lyons and uh, Richard C. Leach, right? Uh, yeah, that was my uh, father. I took an older family name of ours, uh, but my father was Richard C. Leach, and he was a he was a publisher and a printer oh. Oh. in his time. See, you you share wow. you share our DNA. Yes, it's that's in our correct. Too. <laughs> Can't escape it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been. A, we actually, in some of our family history, found out that we have um, typesetters and newspaper mm-hmm. people, and and it's just it's amazing because then you find family members uh, that you didn't know existed and, or exist even today, and mm-hmm. everybody's in it somehow. Photography, yeah. mm-hmm. music, and and music. all of it, and you're in all of that too. Music and poetry and and uh, stage and screen. So. Yeah, yes, true. we might be related. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you bring that up because all, all democracies of a kind are related, and that, that's very true. And so when you, you know, if I go back to my uh, grandfather, he was a printer, and then my father was a printer and publisher, and now I'm doing a writing uh, and, and uh, publishing too. Wow. And so you find common characteristics in, in our three generations, and there's common char- characteristics between uh, the democracy that uh, was in Athens, the the republic that was in Rome, and uh, England's uh, growth of democracy over time, and our distinct democracy in America. And this book goes all together through that. Wow, it's wild. What led you to take this on? Because you're like writing the history of the world in a way. You know, when you look at, mm-hmm. it's like looking at how cultures are shaped. And, you know, it's like the Lord of the Fly <laughs> coming out. Yeah. Well, it was a little bit daunting, but when I got into the yeah. research of it, uh, it became it became a, like a spindle of DNA, like a little helix, mm-hmm. because you can find tyranny everywhere, but yeah. the single strand of democracy that goes through those histories is is quite unique and quite slender. So you're not having to study everything of world history, but just, and I have, not that I haven't, I have a general knowledge of it, but mm-hmm. when you get into the direct lineage between uh, foundations of law. So we had foundations of law in Israel in the uh, Ten Commandments, uh, foundations of constitution in Athens, uh, foundations of both in Rome. And so you find where they were born, and in, in every case there was a, there was a crisis uh, in the people. Let's take it to Athens. In Athens, in the time of Isagoras, he was a tyrant, and uh, in the uh, 500 uh, B.C., and uh, there was a crisis in his city in Athens because he decided half the people weren't, were cursed and that he, therefore, could assume their land and their property and exile them. Hmm. And so in answer to that, they, <laughs> very convenient, they said, yeah. well, there's something very wrong in power being concentrated in one person who can determine that we're not worthy. And so they went in the opposite direction in their generation and decided to diffuse power completely through through different the apparatus of their constitution. Wow, it's it's fascinating to me now even you know the word democracy um if you you know watch all the talking heads it doesn't seem like um there's actually a strong understanding of what democracy is right now currently. Yeah. Yes, correct, and that's that's exactly why a couple of years ago I was inspired to write the work uh, mm. to just give it. It gives a broad foundation. You know, you can say, well, all right, uh, democracy. The definition is government by the demos or the people. Mm. But how does it? How do we do that? And you know, in Athens it was very specific in that it diffused through the citizen population, and they were able to. 
uh, vote on certain measures of the government. It was very direct at that time. Uh, and they also uh, gathered uh, to judge different uh, trial matters. So if someone was accused of theft, you would have a, you would have a, uh, a jury of 500 people who would hear all the evidence directly from the person accused, and then they would uh, be able to render, render a judgment. So, uh, but, so that, you know, that's democracy in the time of Athens. Now, there are certain elements of that that come down to our own day, as in uh, trial by jury and uh, mm-hmm. common local government where everybody has a voice. And and that's the part of it is about democracy. You you make a point of that in in regards to democracy comes with the individual. You don't just look up at the federal government. We look at it individually and all different levels. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. At the local level, there you know you have your town and your town has a council and anybody can voice their concerns at the council level. Then you have the state and your representatives to state government, and then the states are representative at the at the federal level. Um, the, what this book goes into quite a good deal is the foundation of America and how power was ideally centered at the local level, whereas today uh, the difficulty mm-hmm. is uh, all power is being assumed at the top, at the most distant level of government. And so that I can see that as a bit of a problem. And also it seems to be it's not just the government. It seems to also be corporate. Uh, yes. Uh, corporates are amassing a great deal of power because they're not only they're not only national now they're international and global and so they are amassing markets which gives them I mean take a look at Amazon for heaven's sakes which mm-hmm. is yeah it's it's an ideal company when you look at it wow what a success story it's a massive success story um, on the other hand it's it's becoming powerful beyond the measure of uh, individuals to be able to address it. So. Would would it be a good thing would, to to sort of combat that kind of corporate power that we see happening um, to in some way be able to just close the stock market? Ah, everybody freak. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> it, <laughs> I mean, no. But there are there that, are ways to address it, and it it's something that isn't really uh, treated uh, with in today's society and that is that all all corporations really are democracies within a democracy and they have boards of directors and they have shareholders mm-hmm. and all shareholders mm-hmm. have a vote all votes go to the board and the board needs to address those but nobody takes advantage of that i mean they they know they if you're a shareholder of a company you know you have a vote but how many people vote mm. well and see this is what i find interesting there is i think because we're comfortable and we feel or did for the most part, feel very comfortable and pretty safe in this country. Um, I think that's partly because outside of Pearl Harbor, we we go to war, but we don't have war here. From like the outside countries, we may had we had a civil war, but that's different. We don't get attacked by other countries in in this country. Well, it's September it's, 11th was a yeah, break up but today. I mean it wasn't like a war war, like a declared war. So, you know, I think we get a little um, too comfortable in that we will always have a democracy and it will always run the way it should. Yeah, it, 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 we really have to pay attention because yeah. it, it's never static. Things are always changing, and they're either yeah. mm-hmm. changing to the good or to the ill, um, mm-hmm. in my view. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we have to be more attentive and it, it tends so. to me it tends to be that you know the loudest voices are those that are heard, and that sometimes mm. is the wrong voice. Well, it's, it's, we've got to go beyond thoughts and prayers. <laughs> you know, that's what right. we look at because you know yeah. that, I think we're you know seeing that oh la la, la the la la land, um, and we have to go beyond that. And I think what's important, Nancy and I were both talking about this earlier about uh, putting this book together and understanding the foundation because. Um, I would like to take your book into the street and just go, okay, do, you know, and do the question the people in the street like Jay Leno and see if people yeah, know this. That would be because fun. Because that, yeah, would I, be fun. I, I think that this is something 
um, that should be in universities and in schools. Do Absolutely. You, and, and in political offices should maybe have this too. Um, is that what you want to see, the, the younger I would, generation? I would love to see that. I would love to mm-hmm. see that um, because yeah. I consider it to be a practical education. It's also mm-hmm. a how-to uh, mm-hmm. guide as to, well, what mm-hmm. can I do as an individual? Well, this will let you know um, everything about democracy, but told in a way that I think is pretty entertaining. Mm-hmm. And we like the and pictures, very, uh, too. When we were doing the Audible <laughs> book, when we were doing the Audible book, uh, the whole people that were there in the studio were saying, well, geez, this makes it really um, mm-hmm. approachable. I never knew mm-hmm. these things, but the way it's written is very approachable. So that at the end of the book, they were all saying, geez, I have a much better idea of the government under which I'm living. Mm-hmm. So, so that yeah. was good to hear. That was my best review to date. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think that is the importance of being able to. I mean, when think of, people think of history or science, there's this shudder. You know, there's that you get that glazed over look, and and something yeah, right. that we, as we travel and go to historic sites and and things like that, you, you know, it's like why living history is so important, right? It, it's for yes, people correct. to see them in in costume and. You know, if you go to Gettysburg, you want to see the Gettysburg reenactment, but at the same time as we get those things, those things are dying away, those kinds of reenactors, and um, mm-hmm. the, the younger generation isn't stepping into it as much. Maybe it's cosplay now. I don't know. But <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe it's Comic Cons uh, have taken over. Uh, but there is something in in regards to being able to share a story and an understanding of something so important um, that people will be able to resonate and connect with, which is what you've done. It, it's exciting. In putting this together, how, I mean, cause you, how do you make it all flow? How do you do that? Because it's Well, there's, there's certain things that are constructive in the DNA of democracy, um, to use the title. And that mm-hmm. is, if you, go, if you go back to Athens as an example, mm-hmm. at the time there was a mythos uh, about Achilles and about Hercules, and about mm-hmm. their traits as individuals within a demos and and how they reacted to uh their time and how they were all they were on, not only individuals in the form of their bravery in battle they were also individual in their councils before the councils right at their time mm-hmm. so they would be pleading a cause and also exhibiting bravery as heroes. And then in Athens, there was, there was so that formed their mythos, and then they, they formed a constitution, which is also fundamental to uh, democracy. So, and you find that recurrent. So in, when we visit the British Isles, they had a mythos based on Arthur. His mythos centered around the round table and also the quest. Uh, the quest is mirrored in are uh, taking the American frontier and settling it and and venturing it as uh, individuals. So there's a mythos thread, there's a constitutional thread, there's legal threads, and these are all part of the helix. And how do you see it now in regards to other countries? And Because things are changing, yet sometimes it feels like we're, we're going backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that's a cycle or is it, you know, that... that you know, DNA chain like you're talking about. Um, but things are changing globally, and there's unity at the same time as, you know, entire countries that are in complete conflict, you know, and, and you know, there's refugee situations. There's even climate change. I think this is something that's very important right now when we look at what's going on in regards to the, the natural planet and the health of the planet, that if we don't look at what we have in regards to a democratic life that we could lose to nature. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have to, yeah. it's, it's serious right now when I look at things. But how do you feel in regards to democracy around the world? Do you think it, it'll get better as we unite more? Yeah, there's, there's so many variations. And um, yeah. we were talking earlier about the concentration of powers that corporations have. So... Mm-hmm. Let's let's think in terms of that and think about you know in terms in the introduction of the bur- book I go into there's there's uh, very few kinds of governments there's 
a government of one through a few who who uh, rules over multitudes. There's also the few who rule through one over multitudes. So if we think in those terms and think of oligarchy, um, mm. and you see, you can see that in Russia, uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the oligarchs are mm-hmm. very few. So who rules who? Is it Putin ruling the oligarchs or the oligarchs ruling Putin? It doesn't really yeah. matter. That's not a democracy. <laughs> it's right. a tyranny. Yeah. Whether yeah. whether it's the one way or the other. Mm-hmm. So the, the book goes into detail in in how that's differentiated, and you you have various forms. If you if you look at Singapore, uh, for example, I I traveled through there some time ago, um, mm. but that that again is it's more or less a corporate oligarchy that rules wow. that country. But they call it you know, and it has forms of democracy. You might have a form of it. You know, it might have an assembly of a hundred people, uh, but there's eight corporations who tell them what to do. So that I, is, I don't know that if that's is, a democracy. Yeah, that is very similar to Kenya mm-hmm. in that um, when when we were living there, there was a few American companies and a whole lot of other companies from other places, and you and they they had a parliament, they had representatives, but Nobody really seemed to know what was going on. Uh, you know, right. it's chaos. It was a, like I could do anything I wanted. Yeah. You know, there was no checks and balances that seemed to. They may have had them written down, but nobody was enforcing anything. Yeah, and that's which was fun in some ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Well, that's fun. true. If you're one of the few, <laughs> it's very, <laughs> very right. fun. <laughs> well, I was totally ignored because um, being at that time a divorced single white woman in that country, um, half the people wouldn't talk to you anyway. So you're like, oh, whatever, yeah. you know, and you just <laughs> did whatever yeah. you wanted. And then uh, I have to say, my car was stolen, and um, uh, kind of well, a lot of things were stolen. <laughs> and then when you got involved with the police force, you're like, okay, I'll just go buy another car because <laughs> it's not yeah. worth it. Well, you because can't it was that. that was my cousin that stole your car. <laughs> yes, yeah, you actually, it was the police. No, it was a policeman. It and was she the tried police. To sue yeah. the, she yeah. tried to sue, sue the yeah the police department. I know. Yeah. I was radical back then, but I'm tamer <laughs> now. <laughs> well, I had, had I had occasion to be in Mexico once, and I was just driving down the street, and the police said you were speeding. I said, but I wasn't speeding, and they said, well, you can pay us five hundred. Yep, yep. Dollars or not go uh-huh. home. I'm going to keep your license and you can't leave. <laughs> yep, that oh, happened to me. Yeah. That happened to me in Mexico uh-huh. too. It was funny because and it it happens near Christmas time. That's the the one uh-huh. time you yeah. you know that yeah, when that you, you drive need to around get home. there. Yeah. yeah, I went to make the wrong turn somewhere because they put up all these things. And, the and they're like, walk. they come over and they go, Senorita, you are not driving fine. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> you put a block in front of me. And then, and then they're like, well, you're gonna, I'm either going to take you to the, the police station now. Oh. And I'm like, I ain't going no, near no Mexican jail. No, <laughs> not happening not. here. Take my no. cash. <laughs> You'll never come out. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it, no, and I love Mexico, but um, you know, this is that interesting thing about how, yeah, Mexico is a really good example of mm-hmm. yeah, you can get in trouble real fast, real easy. No, and I'm but sure, I'm sure in name, you know, there are many countries that in name either follow the British model or our model. Yes, but yeah. how how real is it? You know, how many? It isn't. It I in a lot of cases it's not. So it the. The reason for uh, the book is to show how distinct America is in its foundation. Mm. And it basically started at the individual local level. And from there, uh, government, you know, the attempt back then was to keep it right there. So you have, Mm. for example, the New England uh, public square in which Mm. that's where democracy was founded. And every literally everybody had a voice at that level of government. And when it got to state governments, the the connection you had to the state government was very little, but you had your representative, and the state government affected very little. And the federal government you'd never hear from, but you'd mm. have a representative there. So it was mm. very much local control. So mm-hmm. you might find a lot of countries that have oh yes we have our we have our national congress we have our national assembly mm-hmm. we have this that and we have our our courts, uh, but if the corruption's in there. 
mm-hmm. and people aren't really represented, it's not really a democracy. It's one in show. It's one that that's, uh, it, is just a facade. It, there's, there is one thing I found that worked in some countries I've been in, and it's called a bribe. <laughs> yeah, that, that's well. That's yeah. that's what happens. Yeah, because they're all there. You could tell that the police department, especially in Kenya at that time, was totally corrupt. Mm-hmm. And you know, you'd be driving, they'd pull you over, and they'd tell you, "Give this officer a ride," and you couldn't say no. The only thing I could ask was, "Could you point the rifle out of the car, up, not?" I'll be done. You know, because yeah, and so that's scary. and you'd be. Yeah, and if they they would shoot, because they weren't really smart about how they handled the guns either. It was kind of a new so, thing at that point. Yeah, so they would, you know, they could shoot a gun by mistake yeah. inside your car. So I always say, okay, fine, you know. And then they would ask you for chai, tea money. And so, you know, they would take whatever. I learned early on, never put all your money in your wallet. Put it here, put it there. Yeah, hide stuff it in, it in different, different places. Stuff it in different places Shoot. in the car so that you don't lose all your money. In one, in in one, one chai. In <laughs> one chai bribe, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But, that's, but that gets In, Amer- in America, though, if you take, if you take a, an example like that, in America you have a recourse mm-hmm. to sue the city or to right. have that mm-hmm. police officer thrown off the force. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That's, that is so true. You see, that's... We do. America really does have. I mean, that's why people come here. Um, it, yeah, it's, exactly. You, you can the American dream, right? And right. a lot of us feel like that American dream is walking on a tightrope now. Um, and it's. I feel like there is that system, and when you read the system, it makes sense and it's really cool. But it's not feeling that great right now. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's so. Well, it's being well tested. and it, it's being tested, and I think that it's. Um, that's why, again, like your book, you know, is so important, the DNA of democracy, that we do understand the foundation of it so that we can make better decisions and actually play a role instead of sitting back, mm-hmm. but playing a role to make better changes because that is how it was set up is for us to make a change. And some yes. and some people want to yeah. take away some of that democracy under the name of democracy. Yeah, it's I, I, going back to what you said a, a, a minute ago. I think we all feel, you know, something's a little off, yeah. and we're not we're not sure what. If you want a mm-hmm. great democracy of the uh, a great sorry a great example of the proper functioning of democracy was actually in the suffragette movement mm-hmm. uh, back uh, between eighteen. It was right after the Civil War until uh, nineteen twenty, but the way in which that societal revolution occurred was a was a masterpiece of how a democracy can function. Uh just yeah. rallying people to a certain idea, getting everybody collectivized, addressing it addressing it at local, state and federal levels and ha- and having all the laws changed by a vast majority agreeing on one thing. Mm-hmm. So that's a yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's how, a great success story. That's how our constitution. I mean it it's it that is part of that if you want to make a change, go out and do it. It, it I just yeah. I feel like where Nancy is it, that there's that one day somebody's going to wake up and go, what happened? <laughs> Oopsie! <laughs> you know, why didn't I do something? You because know, we're too comfortable. And like when even when you go to the polls and you vote, you know, because there's a lot of people don't bother to vote, which that's number one uh, problem. And the second thing is how much do you know about the people you're voting for? Like I, the two party yeah. system. I'm looking at this and thinking is it about the party or is it about the person that you're going to vote for you know because just because a person is a republican or a democrat doesn't make them a republican or a democrat they just kind of want to be either one in order to get elected somehow that's kind of you know and i think we're witnessing that sort of thing well there's a there's there's passages in the book that go back to the Mm -hmm. to the revolution and the forming of the constitution Based mm. on certain certain human characteristics, and one mm. characteristic is there's a continuous thread of a characteristic. Humans all want power. Mm-hmm. Once they have it, they want to expand it. Once they expand it, they want to concentrate it. And once they concentrate it, they want to keep it. Mm-hmm. It's, That's true. It's, it's it's universal. Uh, it's a human tendency, and so the whole of the Constitution was geared against that. You know, if through elections, you're supposed to replenish offices mm-hmm. with different people. 
Mm-hmm. So you can throw out those who don't represent what you want. Well, the, but I think a little of that has been lost. It, it, well, I think that's why it's important it, that it, the education yeah. part is so key because it, if we don't grasp the understanding of what to do and how to do it and, and the actual understanding, again, why it's so important uh, what you've written, because if we don't understand and that time passes by, you know what I mean? All of a sudden when yeah. you do wake up and go, oopsie, i I got to do something now, now you have to go back and educate yourself or you're just going to you know, be a loudmouth with no real tools. You need to have your tools mm-hmm. and an understanding you, of it. This will give you tools. This book is, mm-hmm. is it will give you some tools. Uh, yeah. Uh, just a basic understanding of what it was that brought us to the revolution, why the revolution was fought, why the Civil War had to be fought because we had a tyranny in our midst. And mm-hmm. then, and lastly, again, mm-hmm. a great example of of democracy functioning perfectly with the suffragette movement. Mm-hmm. So it gives you That's... all the things that are tyranny, and that and it defines it. You know what what mm-hmm. is tyranny, and where is a tyrant when you see one? <laughs> and then uh, it's opposite democracy and all. Can the I order. send you a list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I think you know them. I think you know who they are. <laughs> I think, but 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 that's the thing. It, yeah, because it's it, if people also are going by emotion without the without the knowledge, there's an emotional right. reaction to things. And yeah, this you know, will this will put yeah. a knowledge overlay over that. Yeah, because or I think it's important. To, depending on your yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's important. You know, I think it's extremely important. Yeah, yeah. I I want this in schools. I really do, and I'm glad you're doing the audio book because that's the way most people learn these days is listening it to is. the car. Or some, it's you know, amazing so how I'm, many people I said I you know I've written a new book and they uh, and they say well geez when you when you have the audio let me know. And oh, wow. uh, so I I hmm. went so far as to take a book I'd written previously and I I made an audio book of that. So. That'll cool. be out soon too. Is that but by chance of war? Yes, correct. That's your award-winning book. Yeah. Now, yeah. tell us about that one, so everyone can hear about that too. Well, that was that book was written based on um, international governance. Uh, we mm-hmm. were talking about that earlier. Um, mm-hmm. What are what are common things that we need to determine internationally? Well, there again, there's human tendencies that that tend to get us into wars, and it. Mm-hmm. It has to do with uh, human characteristics that tend to lend to uh, the soul of a conqueror uh, weapons enough to, you know, make the world a place of havoc. So um, what that enta- what that deals with is the the um, technological advances we have made, which are all around us. And mm. uh, juxtaposing that to the spiritual stagnation we're in, whereas we all want to get along, we can't, and there's reasons why. And this that book goes into that. Wow, interesting. Wow, cool, man. Yeah, this is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a lot of. Did when you were putting you know the DNA of democracy together, because obviously you've you've got a brain for understanding history and then being able to interpret it to us. Um, I hope. Was there anything? <laughs> is, is, well, yeah, I mean, this is good. I'm, I'm not all the way through it, but I'm like, dude, man, this is cool. <laughs> Sorry, oh, this is how I learned. <laughs> it's like, That's dude, so and so did that. No way. Um, we, I just there was one example. I know you talk about the f- suffragette mu- movement, but recently, um, in in the last elections, we did really ha- see democracy come together, and that was. Um, that law where if you and, – and it happened in Florida was the one who – and you're, you live in an interesting state about where the yeah. things happen or don't. My gosh. Yeah. <laughs> good good place. Um, but yeah. there was that law, and we did and some interviews on this, and it was the law of you, you could have gone to jail uh, for a traffic violation or something like that. And here you come out. Now, once you've served your sentence – you should be able to vote, and people weren't able to vote, and it was insane. I mean, it was had to do with the records, um, and and some were allowed to, some weren't. But we got that vote overturned. I mean, that um, that law, and people are now allowed to vote. And I thought, and it yeah. especially happened in our African American communities to them because of the lack of information, 
And mm-hmm. people rallied together, and they made that change happen. I, was, yeah, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was a it was a ballot initiative for a uh, state constitutional amendment, I think, mm-hmm. if I remember right. Yeah, because Maryland uh, went through that, too. I yep. remember interviewing a journalist in Baltimore about what was going on. Man, that was a Baltimore still in a flex, you know, but it yep. was also about who who should be able to vote. I mean, so you get you get in trouble for smoking a joint, you know, and therefore mm-hmm. now you you have no rights to Can't vote. Can't vote for the that's, rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's wrong. You no, know? but that that is a great instance of uh, direct democracy. Mm-hmm. And it's a great thing. I mean, cut the representation out and just have the whole people of a state decide an issue. I often feel like that, that I would rather read the issues and make up my own mind than ask or vote for somebody to vote for me. Mm-hmm. I really well, the, often feel that way. The mm-hmm. problem is you'd, you'd have no time to do anything else. Exactly. There's, there's so and, much going on. I mean, on. so politicians are expedient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did, was there anything that surprised you when you were putting this together that you went, wow, I didn't know that? Um, what surprised me more than anything is how similar the traits of democracy are, how their foundations are all alike, and mm-hmm. how there were these little moments in history where the tyranny got so – and you know, the thing about this book is it tells the histories of, of tyrants um, – and and the rebellions that had to occur to get rid of them, and hmm. so that that's the basic uh, storyline of the book. And sometimes so you the, look at you have to have the tyrant to unify people again because we get lax. Yeah, yeah. Now you're seeing that right now. Now is that going to happen in Venezuela or not? We don't know. You know yeah. whether this fellow uh, can survive. Mm-hmm. That's. That's the thing. You've 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 got these leaders, and I think you know people are. You know, you look at the world now, and in in this country too, there's there's a struggle. There's a hustle and a struggle going on, and in regards to putting food on the table, uh, you know, clothing kids, and you know all of that, and like you were saying earlier, that everyone, you know, their education is is necessary. Um, but you can't – How? where's the line? I mean, how responsible should we be as individuals, do you think? I think it should be super important about where, where we're living and uh, what the rules are, and do you agree with those rules? Uh, some are important, some aren't, and some are just for people's pocketbooks or extra power, like you're saying, everybody wants that power. But how? where does that line go for education for everybody that's, you know, yeah, really a, a mom? Yeah. yeah. How do we balance and that? It'll, well, it was original. Well, the, in the book, you 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 will walk through the beginnings of this country, where mm. decisions about education were kept at the association level. So you would be together mm-hmm. with the different uh, parents of your community in your time, and you would decide what the curriculum was, and what was imp- just what you said: what is important and what is not. And you try and keep as many decisions among yourselves, you know. And so now when we look at Facebook and what was going on, you know, during elections over Facebook, who was able to post stuff that wasn't even true um, on all levels, all parties are to blame. People are getting fed this fake, (laughs) fake, I don't want to say (laughs) fake news, but I just did. But there is an element of stuff that was going on, whereas people just, you know, that's where it's, I think that I would like that to be changed. You know well, I mean? that's a new it's a new frontier of technology combined mm-hmm. with a massive mm-hmm. corporation. I mean, this thing is huge. Mm-hmm. So what well, what is now you have one of the co-founders saying, well, wait, this is wrong. He's got a feeling it's wrong. And it's because uh, some I at the upper echelons of the corporations, they're not listening to their own constituency, so to speak. But the, I also think there's a, a huge um, age gap. I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but I feel like our representatives are, um, most of them are too old and out of touch to represent the people they represent. Yeah, it's mm. it's the funniest thing. Local representation at the federal level hardly ever changes. 
because they dig themselves in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, getting and that is the one place where there should be a constant turnover every two years, and yet you find yeah. these folks that have been there for forty. It's been their whole life, and yeah. they don't have to. They don't have to change because nobody ever votes them out. No, because they're just sleeping. You watch them on C-SPAN; mm-hmm. they just sleep. Yeah. And it's not just this country. You watch <laughs> Parliament. Oh, Parliament! <laughs> Parliament—they're yeah. snoozing too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to watch in Kenya, like the Parliament. They were snoring. See, everybody that was funny. It's across the board. I don't know if you go in those rooms and there's no oxygen, but like, yeah. they're, yeah. I mean, <laughs> some of them are oxygen uh, thieves. But you know, yeah, what yeah, saying? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think that, you should almost you should almost make it. You know, the ter- the term limit for a congressperson is. Two years and then you're out. Mm. But we do well, have some younger two people or four. now that are working they're, towards things. Well, it's good. yeah, I, just don't, I didn't say all of them. I said most of them. Yeah. But it, there, the criteria could change mm. to um, you only get this long in office and you can only take these kind of campaign contributions. Yeah. There should be no corporate contributions at all allowed. Yeah. Well, they even got to a and and then maybe um, you should take a lie detector test. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> why not? Wouldn't that be fun? No, true. Well, and that you know, who who yeah. do you go to work for afterward? When you leave office, yeah. that's a big deal too, because well, you've got health care paid for you. Yeah. Um, well, you, well while you're in office, <laughs> you know, a lot of promises are made. So exactly. You know, whenever mm. we do um, we do a lot of shows on what's happening to our National Park Service, what's happening environmentally with climate change. We do all kinds of issues crop up, and we always say, oh, we're not going to get into politics, but of course we do. And it just happens. And um, it's very interesting when we see issues like, okay, let's take, you know, get rid of the Endangered Species Act. Okay, now what do we do? And it's so easy to yell at the TV and, and yell at the federal part and, and just go at the, you know, the top dogs. And then all the people that we have interviewed over the years that are like, hey, we have this campaign, if it's a Sierra Club or, you know, all these different organizations, they're always like, you need to go to your local representative on just about right. everything. It is like, there. always go to your locals. And I think we forget that. And it's really important to go to those town hall meetings. And that, you know, when we talk about disinformation that's out there or misinformation, yes. that... Yeah. The only way we're going to get it is when you see it come out of their mouth directly without it being edited. So if you go to those actual meetings, that you'll probably get that information and you can ask your own questions. But we should do the actual get over just sending an email or text message or leave a phone number or you know call a, a hotline. I think we have to go to the actual office. I think yeah, we have a, to go to the local. It's a great way to meet your neighbors. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Man, this is so cool. You know, the DNA of democracy, everybody is out. It's volume one. So now you've got the second one coming out. Is that in 2020? And that'll be in 2020, yeah. And okay. It'll, it'll go to the subjects we've been discussing today. Oh, man, there's a awesome. lot. This is a lot. of. So do you teach this? Do you ever go around and, and you know, do seminars on and lectures? Actually, no. Uh, if I did that, I wouldn't have time to write. Wow. Well, you're, mm. you're doing an awesome, awesome job of this. And everyone, the next one is Shadows of the Acropolis. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, like that'll that. be out in summer 2020, just in time for an election. Good timing. Good You've timing. got awesome timing on everything that you're doing. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> Oh, so everyone, again, uh, The DNA of Democracy by Richard C. Lyons is out now. Uh, get it through all your favorite <laughs> big box stores. Online. Yeah, big box. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go get them. Or, or just go to his website, Lyle, and it's dot com, and keep up with him there. And we always love to play music for our guests, and so you, <laughs> I, I think I picked the right song today. Definitely okay. for you. This Thanks is called very much. Fiction's Thank you. Mm, thank Here you. it is. The song is called Fiction Theater. <laughs> it's by Red Wedding, our friends Michael and Spider. And uh, you can keep up with them at michaelandspider.com. But here it is. Um, yeah, when you're down and not, you take the highest bidder. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? Here it is. <laughs> Fiction Theater. Take care, Richard. <laughs> All right, you too. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Cigarette, she's pot, she blows. 
Yeah. 